In this section, we write a script to parse our FTP daemons logs. Now, our default FTP daemon on our Red Hat system is VSFTPD. It's also one of the more secure FTP daemons available for many of the Linux distros as well. So Debian, etc. Now, often you'll find when parsing your logs that there are many unwanted, unwelcome connections, or at least con connection attempts to your services, your daemons that are published online and off. And you want to be alerted as an administrator or a systems caretaker of any abuses, any threshold exceedances in connections. So let's open a shell and define a script that will, a small script that will go through the logs and count the number of potential breaches or unwelcome connections and of course alert the administrator if it exceeds the threshold. Now we have a script or we have a log that is on located in, in the var log vsftpd directory. It's a log file. It contains many entries of multiple connections. Most are valid, some are not. Some are invalid connection attempts. How do we parse it? Well let's create a script. We'll go to temp2 and we'll touch parse service logs dot shell. This script will eventually be modified so that we can parse multiple logs. Let's edit it and do our normal ritual. And you can fill in typical information. and purpose parse service logs for unwelcomed connections or connection attempts excellent so we know we're working with the vsftpd.log it's our ftp daemon and this system may or may not be published online we want to parse it we can define the log file as a variable Let's do so. Variables should be defined up front. Log file is equivalent to var log vsftpd vsftpd.log. This is the log file that we'll be working with. We'll also grep an offensive string. So let's create a different variable such as bad string or bad argument or bad character or bad name let's call it bad name and in this case for the vsftpd dot log file bad name is equivalent to anonymous and the reason it's equivalent to anonymous is because this system although publicly accessible does not welcome or does not permit anonymous connections so one way to tell if you're under attack or if script kitties are playing around with your system is to search for or parse the number of anonymous instances which exist in your log file. So bad name is equivalent to anonymous. You can change the variable name to whatever you want to be more suitable for your environment. So we have a log file. We have a bad name to search for. We don't yet have a threshold to report on. We can set a threshold. The threshold is the number of instances that we're willing to tolerate. So let's set threshold to be equivalent to 5 and that should be good. Now within the script we need to run the grep command first and foremost. So let's run grep and that's lowercase as, all, as is the case with all Unix commands. grep bad name want this to be variableized from log file. So we'll grep anonymous from log file, and then you'll see the lines that are returned. So this is a basic way to start a script. Let's exit. And let's source parse service logs dot shell. So here are all the lines that are returned. We haven't done a count, but it's certainly more than five, which is above our threshold. These are all anonymous connections. 
people who tried on August 27th to connect to our server as the user anonymous, including their IP addresses. Certainly we could do a count here to see if it would have exceeded our threshold, and it has, or the number of offenses have. And as you can see here, the FTPD daemon reported login incorrect. So now we know we actually have legitimate values. We want to clean this up a bit because there's too much information on the screen. Typically, we're interested in the user who attempted, which is usually anonymous. Sometimes you'll find that it's actually another username or some other name other than anonymous, but one that does not exist on your system. And we're often concerned about the IP address. That'll help us to set up our firewalls and our systems to block, even if on a temporary basis, the IP addresses that offended our network. So let's go back to our script, parservicelogs.shell. We know that there are offenses, they've exceeded the threshold, and the user is located in a column, so is the IP address. It's important to count the columns. In this case, pick any row, one, two, three, four, separated by spaces, five, six, this is actually the sixth column, seven, and in the eighth column we have the username, so we want the eighth column. You count over 9, 10, 11, 12. In the 12th column, we have the IP address. There will be some differences depending on, or some discrepancies depending on the connection that was attempted. But in general, the 8th and the 12th columns will return us the information that we want, in addition to the number of offenses. So let's modify parse service logs our shell. So we know we have a few offenders, and the threshold certainly has been exceeded. So what do we want to do about it? Well, we want to clean up the output. So let's send the output. This time, instead of to cut, let's send it to awk, since we've used cut. We'll send it to awk. Awk is a superior parser. And we'll tell awk to print columns 8 and 12. And then we'll close braces, close single quote. So awk will print just those two columns. If there are any syntax, pro syntax problems, then awk will notify us. Awk also has the capability to perform some grep-like features, so we could ignore grep altogether and search for the string. We'll show you how that works. Let's exit. And now if we rerun the script without the line count, look at what's returned. The output's much cleaner. As I mentioned, there's sometimes discrepancies. That's no big deal. Just ignore them. Bottom line is we got a line because we're interested in the number of offenses. In this case, we got 12. So we need to see where 12 is coming up in the output as opposed to the IP address. Somewhere in the output is the value 12, and awk is picking up 12 instead of the value that we're interested in. So we need to count the columns. It's picked up successfully column number 8, which is the column which contains the username. So we should count 9, 10, 11. 12 should be the IP address value, but it's picking up something else. We can parse. Let's check it. And the reason why it's echoing 12, because we forgot to put the dollar sign to tell it to echo column 12. Let's try it again. So here you can see it's work, and we have the username and the IP address. This helps out a lot if you're an administrator of a system, because you know by quick glance with, just, with such a simple shell script. Remember, the idea behind shell scripts is to author quick and dirty processes that can get information for us. We know that there were approximately 10 offenses from the IP address 192.128.167.33. They're all coming from here. We can't tell where these two lines are coming from, but certainly 8 of the 10 are coming from the same host. So in this case, you may want to block that particular host if it's not a friendly host. But we're not done yet. There's more, of course, we can do with the script, such as the threshold, which is all based on conditional testing, of course. So we have the information. We can set a variable. We can set a variable such as offenses is equivalent to the number of lines returned. And then if, certainly, and we can just do the grep right here, so if then we can do something about it. So let's set, for example, offenses is equivalent to command substitution. And we can grep 
exactly what you see here, or we, we can also do it through awk. Let's show you how awk would do it from the command line. We'll open a shell window, go into temp2, and we'll awk, open single quote, We'll do a regular expression search, such as anonymous, open braces, and we want to print fields 8, 12. And if you have errors with the output, just check the syntax. Close braces, close single quote, and then it'll. we need to also specify the file name. Excellent. So what you see here will work within our script. Let's just copy it instead of retyping it, or if we've typed most of it, but we haven't. So we can just run awk right here without grep's help. Command substitution will allow us to run awk, search for anonymous, and we can substitute the string here for bad name so that we can make this more portable. So let's call this bad name. So we'll tell awk, search for bad name, and echo it into this. Now if you want to do more such as echoing the count for threshold testing, do so. But awk, in this case, will put this value into offenses. Of course, we're interested in sending this output to a utility that can help us out. We want the number of lines. That's important. And then we can echo towards the bottom offenses to see how many offenses were detected. Let's try that. Excellent. So we have 10 offenses. Let's run that again. And instead of bad name, we'll just use anonymous as a string. So now we have 10 offenses, and we've listed the 10 offenses. Let's go back into parse log. And we're sending here offenses to log file. And we can put a condition in which says if offenses. So let's just simply put if. And you've seen this time and time again, but shell scripts are really this simple. If the variable offenses is greater than threshold, and threshold is set to 5, then, and this is in caps, then we can mail the administrator. We'll say echo threshold or offenses in this case so this will be a number in this case 10 so 10 attempted breaches were detected and we'll send this into the mail command subject breach attempt and we'll send it to the root user. So it's quite simple. Now we need to, of course, before we run into another error, close the if condition. If the offenses are greater than the threshold, then echo number of offenses, attempted breaches were detected into the mail command, which will send the mail to root. And once again, this can be all variableized. Threshold can be specified at the command line, bad name, log file. We could turn this entire thing, for example, into position parameter base script which accepts log file bad name to search for and the threshold and then the rest of the script will just search through let's go to the shell and rerun this script excellent now let's check our mailer and we misspelled the user we put ROO instead of root. So let's modify the script. This is why it's good to test. Let's go to the end, and we forgot to put T for root. No big deal. Let's rerun the script and recheck mail. And here it is, breach attempt. Ten, bre ten attempted breaches were detected. And of course, we could have echoed into the file other information, such as the the actual log file in the service in question so for example down here we could just add for such and such a log file you get the picture but the bottom line is 
we have a simple mechanism for parsing our log files, all of which could be driven with positional parameters, including log file, bad name, and threshold. Awk will do the processing, or cut, either or. Awk, by default, will parse through files that contain white space, so we don't actually have to specify the delimiter, as is the case with cut. And we don't even need to list this step here. This step can be echoed or commented out, because really all we're interested in doing is having this script run from a system level basis at every interval using cron, and if it finds the number of offenses is greater than the threshold, then of course we want to do something about it. Now back to the thought of positional parameters, we could certainly drive this with positional parameters. Threshold should be equivalent to the positional parameter, let's say one, and we could, of course, as we've shown you before, set up something to catch the presence of the positional parameter. So, essentially what we need to do is put an if statement before this variable, which essentially says if our positional parameter, which is equivalent to the pound sign variable, is essentially not equal to 1, not equal to 1, then, and we're going to exit the processing of the script so nothing else occurs, then echo at least one parameter is required for the threshold value. And then we'll have the script exit with an error of, let's say, 165, and then done. So this prevents any mistakes happening when we go to set the threshold variable. We need it to be present. So we can set the threshold from the beginning, and then we can alter the flow of this particular piece of code. Let's test this out. So if it's not equal to 1, complain. So we'll source parse log dot shell. Now it exits 165. Let's change mod u plus x parse logs dot shell and we'll run parse logs dot shell and it says you know you need at least one parameter well if we put in two parameters such as threshold is equivalent to two and then some other junk parameter we should still get an error but let's feed it one parameter and it's worked now the threshold is two so if the threshold is two we should get a message there it is ten attempted breaches were detected. How about if we were to set the threshold to a higher value, such as 10? Well, you should know by based on the program whether or not a message should be generated, and it wasn't, but what if we set the threshold to 9? Well, let's rerun mutt. Where's our mutt command? If it's 9, we get a message. So that's how you control the flow of your programs. You can have a shell script. Make positional parameters for anything that you find important within this particular script. Log file, bad name, or text that you're searching for. Just set them up as positional parameters. And then you'll be able to parse other logs using the same script.